Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. Today I'm going to show you how to manage your money as a musician, a music producer, and a creative in the music industry. This video is a little bit different than the typical, but if I don't do it, who else is going to teach you how to do this stuff? I recently came across this old game I used to play. It was called Cash Flow. I had the older version back when it first, first, first came out on my PC, and now they have it online for completely free. This is not a sponsored video. I want to show you how this will teach you like the subconscious things you need to understand about your money and i'll teach you in real time so let's switch back to the big cam so all you got to do i'm going to leave a link below now again i'm so excited to share this with you because i recently refound this after listening to my old podcast um i was like wow i forgot about this game so this is called the cash flow game um by robert kiyosaki it's richdad.com slash classic it's completely free to join i'm going to turn off the sound in a little bit but I'm gonna play this here. I know this is like, you're like, why are you showing me this in a YouTube video? Because this will teach you the fundamentals. So let's turn off the sounds of this annoying. Okay, so you could pick a dream. This is the equivalent of your desire, your calling people say, what, what gets you excited to work? What's your passion? Okay, so this is the first thing we're chasing is we're having a purpose behind our work. Okay, so we choose a dream. We wanna be a stock market um, worker at Wall Street, whatever, choose that dream. Now we roll the die, okay? And it gives us this financial statement on the left side. Now this is gonna teach you the basics about finance, okay? You have salary, which is a different set of income. It's called income, okay? So that's salary. Now I want you to read every single line. Um, the difference between interest, dividends, real estate business, expenses, long story short, the income minus your expenses equals your actual take home cash storage, okay? So you need to, program this into your brain because once you understand that you know taxes and you know all your expenses eat away the majority of your income the game is how do i turn my income into more income and then how do i take that income invest it into an asset something that can multiply itself take that multiplication of the asset dump it into cash do the same thing buy an asset dump it into cash take that cash and then invest it into cash flowing opportunities like real estate, like your own business, different things like that. Okay, so don't worry about these. This is gonna really teach you the principles. Okay, so don't worry about the expenses over time. Don't even worry about the game going into bankruptcy. The point is you need to build up and stack cash so that you can buy assets, things that multiply in value. This will teach you the difference between assets and liabilities. The liabilities are on the right side of this column, this financial statement. These are the things that you owe and things that are taking away from your money source. Now, a mortgage, you're not charged $75,000 all at once. You're charged in increments, okay, through amortization, for example. So you can break $75,000 down over a 30-year mortgage divided by 12 months, and that's going to give you a monthly payment. Let's just do the quick math on my um, iPhone. Okay, I should probably do it on the screen. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? Okay, so let's take seven. Now, we don't need to do this complex math all the time. I'm just showing you that sometimes when you get big bills like this, it's broken up down over time. 75, one, two, three divided by 30 years is the you know typical mortgage divided by 12 is going to give you the monthly payment for your mortgage. In this case, in the game, it's going to be two hundred and eight dollars per the month. So that will be taken out of your income, which is what is it? Forty six hundred take home minus two hundred for the mortgage minus taxes minus. OK, so. The game again is teaching you about that cash the income is not the equation income just gets you the cash you need to invest in the assets okay so whatever job you're working at where you're exchanging your time for money the next step is to take the money and put it into something that can generate more money usually that's when you skill up okay so that's why i'm making this video for you i know it's unorthodox for a music producer to teach you about like how to manage your finance but you need to understand this stuff if you want to truly grow you need to understand the basics okay so long story short Okay, so this is buy wrist watch, which most people do with their pub checks. They just, you know, they get six figure pub check. They go buy in a car. They go buy in a watch, a house, stuff that is not an asset. The reason is because it's not cash flowing you. If I, if I buy stuff and it doesn't bring me income every month, it's not cash flow. That's actually a liability. Okay, that's why the mortgage was in the liability side. It was not on the asset side. Okay, so let's roll the die. Okay, it says inflation hits. So long story short, the gist of the game is to roll, stack up your cash, AKA just stack your paychecks, stack it in cash until you can buy the assets that can multiply. So I'm gonna keep rolling the dice. Okay, just to show you what I'm talking about. So right here, it gives you, I don't know if my head's blocking this, hopefully it's not, but it says you have a stock opportunity. Now the stock costs 30 bucks 
and it trades between the range of $10 and then 30 bucks. So are you going to be a dummy and buy the stock at the highest price? No, <laughs> you want to wait until the stock is at the lowest price so that you can do what? Multiply your money. Money's made when you buy stuff. Money's made when you buy the asset. If real estate is normally $200,000 for a house and then somebody's distressed and for whatever reason they're selling it for 150, when I buy it at 150, I'm already winning. Okay, that's where the upside is, is when you buy it, because now I have a $50,000 margin to potentially make profit with. That's when you make your money is when you buy. So the same thing here in stocks. If I bought the stock at $30 and it trades between $10 and 30, that's dumb. I'm buying it at its high. I need to wait until this thing goes lower, like $10, because if I invest a dollar when it's at $10 and it moves up to 30 bucks, I now took my dollar and I multiplied it by three. And that's the whole point of buying assets, things that multiply your money. You need to find that asset class for you. All right. So in this opportunity, we're going to pass. And this is the hard part that people don't have is patience. You need to be patient until the market goes down, because, again, you make your money when you buy the asset. OK, so it's at 20 bucks. Potential upsides to ten dollars. Not worth it. Skip stack your money. It's going to build this programming in you that says stack your money until you get a true opportunity, which is when you can buy in when something's low. OK, so the same thing would be like if you have a business opportunity to buy some equipment that's way underpriced and you could use it and leverage it to make content and all these different things or get stuff for free and make videos for it and then make money off the YouTube ads, affiliate marketing, things like this. Use other people's products to multiply your money. That's what you need to invest your time into, because that's what's going to multiply your money and your time and your effort. So, again, all these stocks basically say 30 bucks trade from 10 to 30. You just keep stacking cash, keep stacking cash. Don't worry about expenses. What you'll start to realize is that the only purpose for cash is to really pay down your expenses. And I'll say that again. The only purpose for your cash is to pay down expenses. So if you want more cash, you need to either lower expenses or increase the cash. And you can increase the cash by either trying to gain more income, which is just going to take more effort and not necessarily uh, be a parallel between how much you get out of it. So you could be working harder, but not matching financially, or you can invest in an asset which will go up and multiply itself. But again, the key is you need to buy it low. You need to understand when it's low. OK, so here's an opportunity. You can buy the stock for this pharmaceutical company at ten dollars. It trades from five to 40. We're going to buy. Now, here's the tricky part. You need to understand that you never borrow in this game unless you just don't have cash for whatever reason, because you didn't keep enough cash on hand to do what pay for expenses. The only time you borrow, the only time you use credit or a line of credit from the bank or a loan is when you just accidentally didn't have enough cash on hand to pay down your expenses. That's the only time you take out a loan. You'd never take out a loan in this game to risk it, to try and get because that's greed. You know, you're trying to take somebody else's money, put it in the market at ten dollars so that it hopefully goes up to 40. The tricky part is what if it doesn't go up to 40? Now you owe what you just borrow times, whatever the multiple is. So my point is you're learning in this game to not borrow pointlessly. You only borrow when you run out of cash. And the point of cash is to pay your expenses. You only have enough cash on hand to pay expenses. And that's the point of cash. Everything else should be dumped into something that can multiply itself. OK, so let's buy this. Now, the question is, how much do we buy now in this game? I've noticed that. Remember, we have a paycheck coming every roll. So the game is as long as we have enough cash on hand to cover the expenses for the next roll. So we're going to buy eight thousand dollars worth of a ten dollar stock. So let's buy eight hundred stocks of this and let's buy it. OK, so now we have on our asset sheet our financial statement down here in the bottom left. We have what's called an asset. This is a thing that can multiply its value. OK. Income does not multiply its value. That's why it's not in the asset category. Expenses are constant. So you need to have cash in or cash on hand that can pay for those expenses, even if your income doesn't match the expenses. So in other words, if you have one hundred thousand dollars in cash and you have income of two thousand, but your expenses are three thousand, even though you're negative one thousand as far as cash flow, you still have cash on hand to pay the expenses down until you multiply your assets to then bring in more cash so that you get more stable. So the, the whole point of the game, like I'm trying to show you, is stack up in assets, things that can multiply money spent on anything else is a liability. It goes backwards. It takes you backwards. OK, so in the liabilities category, remember, we have that mortgage, the car loans. And most people, what they do is they pay these off because 
you know, in the modern world, you know, your credit cards are what 30% interest, your loans from student loans can be 6% interest, 3% interest. So the question is, if you're making income, what do you pay down first? Do you pay down your debts first? Or do you invest in assets? And here's the tricky part. If I can find an asset that I can multiply 40 X, if I could take $1 make 40, if I can invest in a stock when it's $1 and it's going to go up to $40, that's a better investment of that cash than if I invested in um, paying down student loans, for example, because student loans, let's say the interest rate is 6%. Okay. I'm paying it off. That means I'm guaranteed a 6% return on my money. Okay. Same with uh, any other loans. Basically, whenever you pay down a debt or a loan or credit cards or something, that's the guaranteed return that you have. So if you're paying down credit card balances, you're going to be guaranteed 30%, which is about the average credit card um, APR. Okay. So you're paying that down. You're getting 30% on your money. Okay. Because they would charge you 30% if you don't pay it. So you're saving yourself 30% in the future is my point. But if you buy an asset that can multiply itself 400%, 4,000%, 4,000 to 30 is a big difference. So it makes more sense to invest in assets that can multiply faster and higher than those debts that are constant values. Okay. The whole trick is how do I find an asset that can multiply my money, which can pay for all the debts. Okay. So that's, I know it's a little nuance and we'll get into what that means. Okay. So for example, this stock is at a dollar and I only have 600 on hand. The question is, should I buy 600 um, of this stock? And because the range is typically $5 to $30, this means it could 30 X my investment. So if I put 600 in, let's do some math. I should have kept the calculator open. Let's do this again. So if I put in 600, now this is where we're measuring risk. Are we going to put in all our cash that we have on hand to potentially not have enough cash on hand to pay for expenses for this opportunity? Let's do some math now, because every stock you buy in this game does not automatically go to its high price. You know, it could take a whole metaphorical year in this case for the stock to go up. Can you last a year without this cash on hand? Okay. So this is, let's do some math. Okay. So we're going to put in 600 potential bucks, buying the stock at $1. Its potential outcome is $30, which we're going to sell it at the peak of the market. So we're going to multiply 600 times 30. Okay. That's a 30 X. So we can potentially get $18,000 if we buy the stock at 600. Now let's look at the assets that we already have. We bought, um, what is it? $8,000 worth of stock before. So let's $10 times 800 uh, stocks that we bought is 8,000. Now, remember that trade range goes from 10 to 30 or 10 to, I think it's 10 to 30, but 10 to 40 is the game technically. So let's multiply that by three. So I have a guaranteed 24,000. This is a little advanced. Okay. So you got to stick with me. So what I'm saying is the investment that we already made can net us a potential 24,000. That's the safe bet. We already have that cash offhand. We don't have it on hand. We can't sell the stock right now. We don't have the opportunity to, so we can hold this and get a guaranteed 24,000 or risk out all our cash, which is like putting all your chips in. Okay. We can risk all our cash on hand to potentially get $18,000 extra to me. That's greed. And to me, that's not a safe bet. So what we're going to do is pass this opportunity, even though it's at its lowest price, we don't have enough cash on hand to take that risk. And this will start to train you as to how much cash you should have on hand as a safety net. Okay. So let's skip this. And you'll learn your thresholds of risk tolerance and all this type of stuff. Now I'm not going to play this entire game because it takes a little long. Um, I'm just showing you these basics. Okay. So now it says another stock is at the peak of the market. We're going to pass the opportunity. Now we're looking at stocks because in the game, they use stocks as the asset class that multiplies itself. The equivalent for this in modern day would be, should I invest in ads that can potentially give me a four X 40 X actually, I've never seen an ad do 40 X, but let's say four X to 10 X return. If you own a business that is. Now you have to judge the risk. Are you going to put all your cash that you have from your savings into your ad campaign that you don't know what's going to work? That's that opportunity that I just talked about. Yeah. Facebook ads might be cheap or TikTok ads might be cheap, but you don't have the history and you're going to be putting all your cash. Remember when we had 600 bucks question is, are you going to put your last 600 into an untested thing? Or are you just going to let your business grow and multiply itself times three, the safe bet? Okay, so this is going to teach you risk and how much cash you need to have on hand. So you're not making foolish things. Um, in this case, it just basically pushes you forward when you donate money. You can um, get more money faster. Okay, so here we're just we're not buying at the we're buying only at the bottom of the market. And once I have one more lesson here to show you, then we'll wrap this video. 
I know this is an obscure video. You're like, why would you show us this? But when you don't understand how money works, you don't understand the purpose of income, the point of expenses, the point of cash flow, and the point of having something that can multiply itself to go against your liabilities. It doesn't mean don't have liabilities. It means you need to have an asset class that can outperform your liabilities. Okay, so let's keep skipping this. So I'm gonna pause the game until we get to an opportunity. All right, here we have another opportunity to buy the stock at $5. Its range is five to 30, which means I can multiply this potentially by six. It's a six X return. That makes a lot more sense than paying down the debts in this case and you know the three X return that we had before. And now we have a little more cash on hand because we what? We saved our money over time by making sure that we just stacked the income over time after the expenses and did nothing with it until we had an opportunity to invest in assets, things that go up in value. Okay, so now we're gonna buy this. So we have 11,000 bucks. Let's divide that by five so we can figure out how much to buy. All right, 11. So I'm gonna put all 11,000 in. Okay, one, two, three, divided by five. And that's because we have the guaranteed stocks from before to guarantee us about 24,000. Okay, so I'm willing to take this risk and only have the 300 on hand because I know if I roll next, the odds of me spending something in the game are very low. So we can buy 2,200 stocks of this um, stock, okay, for 11,000 bucks, let's buy that. Okay, so now we have two major asset classes. Now I only take the opportunities in this game when I can buy a lot of the stock for a low price. I rarely put in $200 here, 300 here. I put in a lot of money all at once. I don't go here and there with it because then you have to manage the return per each deposit. I know I'm getting a little advanced, but if you buy a stock at a dollar, then you have an opportunity where it goes up to ten dollars, but you want to buy more. You can sell the ones you bought at one dollar for ten dollars, but you have to measure how much you actually bought at a dollar so that when you sell those and then you buy it at ten and then it goes up to twenty, then you sell what you had. You need to know where you're buying points so you actually know your profit. OK, so let's just skip through the game. So I'm going to pause it till we get to another sell opportunity. I opened up the video because I want to show you another opportunity. This is where we can buy it low. So again, this is the MYT4U stock. We're looking at our bottom left asset class. The things basically, where's our money parked and at what price did we buy it at? Because we know where it's going to multiply. So where's our money outstanding to when it comes back? So right now we bought it at five dollars before. So we're basically just buying more of the same thing. So 20, let's put in 2000 divided by four be about 400 shares. OK, and we're going to buy that at 2000. So again, I'm just stockpiling cash at a low price. OK, so I'm going to pause it until again, we get to that opportunity to sell. OK, so the game has had a really low market for a long time. This is called a bear market. Now, a couple turns ago, you didn't see it on cam, but the employee in the game got downsized to me, which means he didn't get income for about two turns in the game, which could be the equivalent of, let's say, six months in real life. Now, he would have to have enough cash on hand to pay those expenses every month for six months. That's why I said you cannot keep, you can't dump all your money into the assets. You have to keep some on hand. The whole point of income is to have at least some on hand so that just in the case that you get laid off in this case for six months, that you can have something to pay down those expenses. The only purpose of cash is to pay down expenses. Other than that, it's to put into an asset that can multiply itself. Okay, so in this case, the employee in the game got downsized which means he wasn't paid for, you know, the equivalent of, let's say, six months. But we had enough cash. We had eleven thousand dollars on hand cash to pay down those turns until he got a new job in the game to bring in what more salary, more income. OK, now we're going to take this excess income and we have another buying opportunity this time at a lower rate than before. So last time we bought it at ten bucks. Now we can buy it at uh, one dollar, which is incredibly crazy. So this would be the equivalent of buying in. Now, I'm trying to use real world, real world terminology. So if you bought into crypto, let's say Bitcoin at 60,000 when I bought it, I bought it at like 40,000 way at a tie. OK, I didn't know. So you buy it at 40,000, it dips way down to 20,000. You're like, darn, I should probably sell because it's not going to go anywhere but down. OK, so that's the mentality some people have. But you have to remember if it's going to multiply potentially from 40,000 to 100,000, that's still doubling your money. So you, if you just wait and buy more when it's at 20,000, remember, most people, they're mixing up the income with the asset side. OK, the income's job is to only pay down your expenses. That's the only point of income outside of taking the excess and putting it to the asset class where we can multiply this stuff. 
Okay, most people try to live off of the assets and that's not what we're doing in the game. We're living off of our income only until we can cash out the asset and then live off of that for a certain amount of time until we invest it back into the asset. But most people, again, they'll start a business and try to live off their business as if it's that's their job. And that's the problem that most producers have and most creatives is they take all the money that they're making in the business and shove it into lifestyle, which evaporates the money. And now you have no more money to put into the business to multiply the asset. Okay, so let's buy this at one dollar and let's buy 13,000 shares. OK, because we know that's going to be a huge payday if it goes up to 40. We're going to 40 X 13,000. Let's just multiply this out. Let's say it hits top of the market, 13,000. Even if it doesn't hit top of the market, it's still pretty heavy. So let's multiply this by 40. OK, we have a potential upside of a half million dollars for buying in at 13,000. That's worth it to me. That's worth a lot. OK, so let's buy that at 13 and let's keep playing the game until we get another opportunity to sell the stock now notice in this game i'm skipping over these little real estate deals that can you know that cost me two thousand down and i'll get a cash flow of 220. if you do the math that's a 10 percent return okay i'm putting my money down two thousand dollars i'm getting 200 back that's 10 percent. i'd rather go for something that can give me four thousand percent than ten percent but in the game, you need cash flow opportunities in order to escape the time for money game, because at the end of the day, I'm still trading time for money. You know, I have to put in money in the asset, sell it, buy low, sell high. Whereas when you buy into cash flowing opportunities like building a business online that has recurring revenue, building a YouTube channel that has recurring revenue, doing affiliate marketing that has recurring revenue, these things are going to bring you cash flow. So when you invest into these, you get out what's called of the rat race in this game which takes you out of the work game. OK, so we're going to skip all these real estate deals for now. Now, most people would buy into them stacking a little cash flow at a time. But for me, I'm skipping all this because the number one goal in the beginning is to stack capital so that you can buy into all these opportunities and have all these cash flowing uh, results from that. So I know we're going over a lot. I'm not a financial advisor. This game just teaches you so much about how to handle your money and what it's for. So right now we can buy it at 10. We bought it at 10 before. So why not just buy some more? This is by 200 shares at 10. We already bought some, so we already locked into that stock. Now notice my guy only has $20 on hand. Now, if something happens in the game where he lost his job for whatever reason, I would be negative as far as cash on hand. So luckily nothing bad happened. <laughs> okay, but I can't even buy the stock if I wanted to, uh, but we could technically double our money if we sell all these stocks right now for the MYT4U stock. So we have 2,400. Uh, we have 2,600 shares at five bucks. So we could basically multiply that times two and multiply. So what would that be? Let me do this, some math real quick. Is it worth me selling right now? Probably not. 2,001 plus 401 and equals and then times five. So this is the value of those stocks, 13,000 bucks that we bought in with. So we could double our money. That's not worth it to me. 26,000 on hand. That's not worth it. Uh, in this case. So we're going to pass this opportunity. So I'm going to again continue to play this until we get to the sell opportunity, because that's when this game becomes fun. The time has come. We now have a sell opportunity. OK, that's why you have to be patient. I rolled this dice probably 100 times until we got to this opportunity. Now, most people, when they invest in their business or they invest in an opportunity, they're so impatient. They want money right now and they drain their investment to where there's no life to even give back to us. But remember, when we plant a seed, it takes time to germinate for that seed to turn into a tree. You, sometimes you have to wait and be patient. This teaches you patience in the market. Money takes time to multiply and you got to let it multiply. You can't keep touching it and moving it or else it's not going to multiply. So here is OK for you. We could sell it at 30. We bought all the stocks at $10 and $1. Remember, we bought 13,000 at $1. So we can multiply this times 30. So 13,000 times 30 is what? 300 something thousand so that's the main thing so let's just sell all our stocks basically i don't know if you guys can see let me see if you can see um over my head let me see if you can see that number right there yes you can so we can sell all these stocks for a half a million dollars that's what patience gives you if you just constantly keep doing the same thing in a rhythmic fashion and be patient now we have a half million in cash so i'm selling all these stocks again buy low sell high that's the game OK, so this is the point of the game is now we're cashed out. Now you can keep doing this and buy more and more stock until you get about 16 million dollars. Keep multiplying your money like that. Um, but to save you time, I'm trying to show you that how you should think about cash. OK, so here are the you know, if you skip ahead and you just want the summary. Income is used 
Okay, income is a certain type of thing. Okay, income minus your expenses equals your cash on hand. Okay, you take that cash on hand and then you wait and stack it up until you can invest in an asset, something that can multiply that cash. So if I could take that dollar and I can invest it in something that could potentially give me $3, that's what's called an opportunity or a deal. Okay, that could be through a stock, it could be through crypto, it could be through your business, it could be through a lot of different asset classes. But the point is, you need to stack the cash in order to either pay down those expenses to you know, overcome that six month potential downturn if your job were to get rid of you for some reason and you didn't have income for six months, you need to stack that six month buffer. Some people stack a year buffer of cash just on hand. Remember, your working income minus your expenses. This is tax. This is rent. This is your food. All your expenses gives you cash on hand. Take the cash on hand and stack it bigger. OK, now, once you stack your cash bigger to where you have a nice little net in the case that anything crazy happened, you'll be fine. So stack that up. And you t you now look at your income and your cash as how do I put it into an asset class that can multiply what I just saved up? OK, so once you have that, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. <laughs> now, once you have your money from the, uh, you know, assets, it will take time to multiply. OK, now you wait and you stack more. You do the same thing. You stack income minus expenses cash. You just stack your cash and be patient until you can buy low something that you know has a trade range okay but you buy low and you sell high it's pretty simple okay and you just keep doing that same thing over and over and over again so i just wanted to show you the game that i like to use to learn um financial literacy now this is the beginner stage but it teaches you a rhythm and a purpose for money so money's not this abstract thing coming in okay so that's i know this is a random video for our channel it's not random technically i show you a lot of stuff that's I'm going to show you the bigger picture of music production, but I think you needed this one. And uh, if you like this, like the video, subscribe if you're new. Peace.